so while this is drying, I'm going to be thinking about my foreground. There's a lot of browns, golden colors. There's the sandy part, which has a kind of a red clay color to it, almost a sienna, uh, like a pottery uh, um, color. And uh, so I'm thinking how, and it's very lumpy. The foreground in front of me is very lumpy. So how do I want to convey this? And right now, while I'm thinking it through, I'm going to wash off my brush and I think just add the very lightest uh, tint of a brownish color, light brownish color. This is a quinacridone gold and it's almost like a, a graham cracker color, I don't know. These are my rocks. I'm not going to go over my rocks. I could go over my rocks, but I'm not. This is a fairly dry brush on dry paper. So where those two were wet on wet, this is dry on dry. And when you're going dry on dry, you have to be very careful with your brush strokes because it dries immediately and there's not a lot of things you can change about it. So it takes a intentionality of your brush strokes. I can run into this edge because I know this bottom edge is dry and it's not going to bleed or this one's a teeny bit wet so it's bleeding a tiny bit there and I'm not worried about that. I like this look. It is giving me a little bit of a base that looks like it might be sandy and I'm fine with that. I'm going to wait a little bit here for this to dry and I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with the sky. As you probably remember when you're working with watercolor you need to be very careful and not put two wet uh, edges together unless you intentionally want them to bleed into each other. So I'm going to let this dry and on this hot pressed paper in the sun and this wind it'll dry really carefully, particularly down here, the uh, dry on dry phase. This wet on wet, I think this is dry, almost dry now too. So I'm going to pause for a minute and look at what's happening, which is a very important part of watching paint dry. And if you go away when things are drying, you'll miss a lot of what's going on. So I suggest that you stay tuned into your painting, that you're paying attention, and if something is going awry, you can adjust it. But part of the fun of painting is just seeing what happens. So I'm watching this dry, and it's getting a little bit of a hard edge here, and I'm okay with that. I do like the look that I do feel I have the illusion that there's clouds reflected in this water. Okay, I'm going to, this is pretty much dry, but I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer. That still feels damp, and I can feel some moisture, so I'm going to wait on this too. I'll probably get back to this first. On the stone, on the rocks, the boulders, they have a gray um, mass to them, a gray undertone. It's fun to add a lot of different layers to rocks. So I'm going to start with a gray. You might remember to do a gray, you can mix complements. Um, I tend to not have gray or black paint on my palette. It can get so grubby and make the other colors look so flat. I tend to make blacks or grays with complements. So if I even take this blue and this orange and mix them together, I get a pretty nice gray. Do you see how that happened? It's a little bit on the greenish side, and so to, comp to moderate that, I'm going to add a little bit of purple. There we go. A little bit more. Okay, and I do like to test my colors on a... Oh, that's a nice color. Okay. So I'm going to start with this, I think I'll start with this rock, 
This rock actually has some light white stripes in it too. So I'll be thinking about, should I paint around those areas? And I'll try to do that. I've kind of sketched them in with my pencil marks. When I'm painting rocks, I try to think about the mass of the rock and somehow thinking about the shape, the roundness, the mass, I feel helps me convey that. So although I'm using a flat brush, I'm following the curve of the stone. That one I'm going to leave that layer right now. This particular one back here, I'm going to add a little bit more of a red. There's a large shadow on my palette right now, so I'm sorry you can't see the colors very well. In fact, it's kind of hard for me to see the colors. But I'm going to add a little bit of a red to this gray, so it's not the same shade as this other rock. And you do need to think about rocks overlap. So which rock is in front, which rock is behind, that kind of stuff. And the fact that this is kind of dotty, it's perfect. I haven't painted this rock back here yet because it's against these other wet areas, so I'm gonna wait a little bit. What's interesting is this is completely dry and I think my rocks are almost dry because there was so little paint and it's so hot, where I still have a puddle of water over here, which suggests that this is still probably too wet to paint against also. So I'll just be patient with those. I'm thinking now about how I'm gonna handle. There's some deep shadows too, which are kind of fun because they're running in the front of the rocks. And then as I mentioned, the ground is so lumpy that the shadows are falling over the lumpy ground too. It'll be fun to put that in. This back here is a little bit more red. I might add the, I might add the two by fours that are on this dock. Um, I might do a little bit more drawing because my dock was just barely sketched in. You can draw on top of your watercolor too. Sometimes it's harder to erase it. So, and there's nothing wrong with pencil lines showing through. It just depends on, on you and what you like to see. So if they're gonna bother you, then draw really lightly. If it's not gonna matter, then no big deal. Thinking about the perspective too, the posts in the front are closer together. And the posts in the back here are, appear taller and farther apart. So, this side I can hardly see of the dock because it's uh, covered with the, the um, vegetation. So, and the dock goes out this way, out into the lake, and the boards this way are... This is the nice thing about painting, painting plein air. When you're actually out in the open, you can move your head to see things. If you're painting from a photograph, you're stuck with only that point of view, and it can be limited. If there's an edge you can't see, you can't move around to see it. So I love painting outside. And these slats are going this way. There we go, I've got those in. And these are going this way, horizontally. These are going vertically, these are going horizontally. And I actually can't see this edge, but 
having been around a lot of docks, I know that in theory, I would see the the flat, here's the two by four, and I know I would see this edge. So I'm gonna sketch it in a little bit, and then I might have the vegetation that's on top of it. I was looking for my eraser, I can't see it. I'll get out another one. I use a kneadable eraser. And it's an eraser that you can squish. It will take most of the pencil marks off without marring the surface of your paper, which is nice. Now you might wonder, since I have the dock going out over the paint, is that going to be a problem? It's on top of the paint. And it's hopefully the p colors that I use will be dark enough that you won't even notice. Although John Singer Sargent was a great one for painting in layers and if he decided to add something and the water went through the duck, he just didn't worry about it. Our minds are so powerful, they can read what the image is supposed to be, even if we see water going behind it. It's really quite cool. I'm sure my rocks are dry now, so I can add this, uh, the first layer of this other rock back here. And I'm going to make it a similar color. I've mixed my colors together a little bit, so it should be slightly different than the other colors I have there for my rocks. And it's behind, so it's going to bump up the back of these. That's good. Okay, I've just barely begun on my rocks. It's a good start. I'm going to, so I begin to see some of my value changes. I'm going to put a little bit of a darkness in the front of the rocks. funny, I have a lot of things going on in my paint. They're wet, so they're uh, easy to pick from, but because it's warm, they're forming kind of a little bit of a skin on top, and that's okay too. But because it's so hot, they're kind of melting, so I ne I'm needing to figure out <laughs> the best way of getting the paint out. And again, that's one of those fantastic things about painting outside. You always have a new challenge to address. This is a dark brownish color, and I think it'll be just about right to add to the front of this rock. And it was. It was just the color I wanted. This rock has a lot going on, so I'm just adding stuff. Because this is hot pressed paper, I know it's going to granulate a little bit. Uh, the uh, surface of the paper uh, changes and becomes a little bit dotty sometimes uh, and so I'm going to use that to my advantage as I'm painting these rocks and that's my second layer on this rock I'm also going to bring just this shadow down a little bit I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it entirely but I'm just going to bring it down a little bit here there we go Now while I'm doing some of the shadows and all the rocks, I'll go ahead and go to the next one, I think. And that was a little bit bluer, so I'm going to add a little bit blue into this dark brown gray. And hopefully come up with a color that'll work for this next rock. Yep, luckily that's the perfect color. Now I can mix this a little bit, because that's part of the shadow. And the shadow, if some of that color mixes together, quite alright. So, got the little bit of the brown on the bottom of this rock. This might be a granite, so I'm adding some, I don't know, stripey things in it. Looks quite uh, speckled, kind of staccato right now, but once I add a few more layers, it'll come together. And again, I'm going to now add some color to this one. And it was the same, but it had more reddish in it. So I'm going back to this darkish brown, adding a little bit more red, and hopefully coming up with a color that will work as the dark for this rock. Oh, I think that's just right. I'm thinking about surfaces and edges and mass as I'm painting rocks.
I'm going to move over to the slats. The slats on the dock, they look like they've been painted numerous times. So they're kind of an indistinct color. I'm going to try, I'm going to start with this color and kind of like the rocks, I'll do it in a lot of layers. And some of them might, in fact, the, the water, the lake that's behind them will, because it's transparent watercolor, will change the color of the slats, which actually is kind of perfect for me. This is that little front facade, front edge of the 2x4 that I said, I'm not sure if I can see it, but I'm going to pretend that I can. Since I'm doing layers, I don't want to get any one layer on that's way too dark. And also with the blue coming through from the lake, that's going to make it darker also. And so I don't want to overdo it in any one brush stroke. Sometimes when you're painting in little shapes like this, steps or squares or even the rocks, you kind of feel like you know what the colors are in your head, but you kind of feel like it's a paint by numbers. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I know paint by numbers are popular again. And I think, great, anything that you can do that helps you paint, that helps you connect with nature, that helps you feel creative, any of these things I think are wonderful. So if you're drawn to paint by numbers, go for it. If you're drawn to coloring books, go for that. I have this color on here, and since it matches this rock, I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, lines, rock lines, texture, fault lines. I don't know what these are gonna be, but something that's gonna help this rock kind of have more surfaces happening. Again, because I'm layering, every layer is fairly transparent and a light touch. And because rocks have a lot going on, I'm just painting eh, a lot of things. I think I'll, while I'm over here, I'll come back and add maybe a little bit more detail to a couple of these other rocks. A little bit more shadow here in this crevice it would be a very very deep shadow there if you recall these rocks were not sitting at this particular point they're scattered across the beach and I pulled them together in order to have a mass here that grounds the paper in the, the picture in this corner now I think I can begin to think about my trees across the way this is absolutely dry now the jack pines the illusion that they give off is large, upward lifting shapes of green. So I'm going to move, I have my brush strokes moving to this top to help suggest some of those green colors and the, the energy of the tree moving up. I'm going to turn my paper around because for me it's easier being closer to what I'm painting and since I know the energy I want to have going up I can do it this way just as well as I can do it the other way. I think I'm going to start by using a flat brush. Flat brushes never carry as much water or paint as a round brush but in this particular case I don't want it oversaturated so I think I'll be fine. I'm just going to add some water. Again this will be wet on wet in order to help give some movement to the upward motion of these trees. Mm -hmm. 